Hi guys, it is Melissa from Melissa vs. Fibromyalgia here. We are talking week 13. I can't believe it. We're nearly at the second trimester. It depends, I guess, when you consider the second trimester as starting, uh, whether it's week 13 or 14. But it's really exciting. So much uh, has been happening and I feel like a lot has been going on emotionally for me. Uh, and that's the big thing this week. So. I am simultaneously really excited and thankful that this pregnancy is going better for me so far than the other two and that's down to the Lodos naltrexone. I'm in a better place health-wise than I was either of the other two times and so this time I have two small children and I'm working 24 hours and I'm doing all the things I'm trying to do for this blog. Uh, and all the things that go with it and I'm managing even with the fact that the baby, he's not really a baby anymore, the toddler, that the toddler has been waking up once or twice a night at least for the last eight weeks or so. Basically ever since I started my job he's been waking up again with his double teeth. Um, but on the flip side of that I, it's really upsetting because I had experienced such an improvement in my health, particularly with my neck, which is something that I have struggled with for more than 10 years, day and night, 24-7. And I have been so thankful since Lotus Nutrix have started working for me. It had uh, got me to the point where I wasn't fighting all night every night anymore. And I can feel that creeping back and, you know, early in the morning my neck's getting quite stiff and sore. I'm having to put the deep heat on a bit earlier in the night and I'm waking up with headaches uh, quite often. And they're taking quite a long time to clear and that morning stiffness is back. And that's kind of following me for some time. And <clears throat> I think when you combine that with the symphysis pubis disorder... It's, uh, it's making me a bit despondent, it's really upsetting. So you've got on the one hand, it's way better than the other times, but on the other hand, it's worse than what I was dealing with, you know, in the last six to nine months, and I'm really disappointed, and I really hope I can get back to that, because, wow, it's sad to go backwards. But anyway, so that's what's happening there. Uh, I think you'll probably find the same thing. As you go along, lots of uh, little bits will come up at you, and I think it's really good to acknowledge them. The symphysis pubis disorder, whew, that's been a thing. So I have been getting a really uncomfortable sore back. I feel everything in my back. Uh, so it has to be pretty bad for me to feel it in the front of the pelvis, uh, where a lot of people feel it. Uh, and so just sitting down for periods of time is quite difficult. By the time I have driven my kids to care and then uh, got to work. My back has kind of had enough of sitting in the car and then by the time I do my four hours physically in the office, my back's had enough. Uh, two days ago I actually was trying to work standing up because my back could not stand sitting down anymore. So that's been a bit tricky and because it's so early it does make me worry about what's coming. <clears throat> because uh, this job is relatively new and in New Zealand we're very lucky we have paid parental leave uh, but I have to be able to work until week 34 to be eligible for it and for my job to be held while I'm gone and I just worry that I won't physically make it that I won't physically be able to walk into work at that point so that's um, a bit tricky uh, and when I'm getting home I'm having to put my heat pack on and, and try and do the other couple of hours that I need to do from home for work uh, and then getting through the evening. I, I've made a video about the symphysis pubis disorder which I'll load really soon and so it's got the tips and the things I'm doing to deal with it so it's not like I have nothing but it's it's still something I'm dealing with every day uh, and I'm not sure that it's going to go away uh, as the baby gets bigger but I am definitely religiously doing uh, the exercise my uh, physio gave me, the little strengthening exercise I talk about in the SPD video. Uh, <clears throat> I basically keep my legs hip width apart and just lower slightly down into a kind of makeshift squat and then engage everything, my cores, my pelvic floor, my glutes, my legs, and then slowly raise up and then inhale and then drop down and do it again. And so she's advised to do this kind of multiple times in multiple points of the day. <clears throat> so I'm really committed to this. So 
uh, I am doing my best with that because if that's the best strengthening I can do I will do it. Uh, I have my Swiss ball. I am sitting on it right now. My favorite thing to use it for is literally just getting to sit down and kind of use the lower back because I find it gets quite stiff. I think when you're quite sore you want to protect it and you want to stay still and and that's not really helpful. I think that's counterproductive so keep I'm keeping it moving as best I can. Uh, sometimes it really is just sitting still with the heat pack though. Uh, apart from that the fatigue is still here. I mean it's not awful but I'm pretty tired and it's worse than it was you know pre-pregnancy. Um, the I've talked about the pain already. The nausea is pretty good. I've been pretty lucky since I think it was around week eight so that's very exciting. That this is, um, apart from that really severe couple of weeks, uh, it's not been as bad this time as the other two times. And I think, again, that's my health status. Um, there's some research that suggests morning sickness is essentially uh, a nutritional imbalance or something going wrong in that sense. <clears throat> so I was taking the B6 as well, just in case that's helping. Uh, we, I'm going to the midwife tomorrow for my second visit and we'll talk about the results of the nuchal scan and test because it's a combined test and I'm not sure what else we'll talk about probably just have a, a general checkup and then make an appointment for next time I mean it's pretty nothing special is happening I've already got my form filled in because I know where I want to labor it's um a bit funny because my first birth was at one hospital and I really didn't enjoy that so then I went to another one in the region which is kind of the main one and that was great but now I've realized that the smaller one near my home is probably okay and it was probably more about the individual person I had as opposed to that hospital um, from the first time so I'm going to give birth into uh, in the third of four hospitals in the region so I am kind of joking that I can really give good uh, user reviews uh, for the whole region <laughs> uh, so that's already organized I I've been thinking about these things quite a lot. I don't know if anyone else thinks about um, labor and nursing and all that sort of thing so early on, but um, because I've had two very long, very difficult labors, I want to plan as best I can. I want to do as much as I can. And given that there's a lot of physical things I can't be doing, like squatting or any of those other preparatory works that you do to help yourself get ready for labor, I, I want to do everything that I am allowed to do. Um, and I heard that third labors are notorious for being the kind of start stop and really slow leaning in but then really fast once you get going and after two very long labors that I felt from the very beginning kind of even before they call it active labor I just have no idea how that's going to go and I as a planner and as someone who uh, has been able to really help myself through my planning and through my research I find it very difficult to let that go um, but anyway, I'll talk about that more as we get closer to the time. Uh, that's it for this week. Uh, please hit subscribe if you want to be notified for um, the next videos that come up. And have a look through my other videos. And hit like if you liked this video. Come on over to the Pregnancy and Fibromyalgia Facebook group. I'll put the link down here. Uh, we are talking pregnancy parenting and uh, trying to conceive and all that sort of thing with fibromyalgia. We're pretty much chatting every day. Uh, we're getting new member requests every day. Uh, and don't forget my book, Pregnancy and Fibromyalgia. That's everything that I've learnt over my first two pregnancies and all of my research. And I will leave the link for that below. And do feel free to come on over to melissavsfibromyalgia.com and check out my resources page. So I've got a ton of resources for pregnancy plenty of um, articles and all that sort of thing. So I hope that you can find plenty of information so that you don't feel as vulnerable and alone and unsure as I did in my first pregnancy. That's exactly why all of these things exist. So I really hope you make use of it and give me a comment below if you've got anything to say. Thanks. Bye.